We grow a lot of potatoes, we have a lot of potatoes, and we eat a lot of potatoes. Today's video is gonna be all about potatoes. And we're gonna be taking you guys along for potato-themed meals. We got small potatoes, purple potatoes, all different kinds. This one happens to be a Huckleberry Gold, and this is a big one. And it has a slight nutty flavor, delicious potato. And we're gonna start with this one. We're making potato bread. Potato bread, if you have never heard of it or had it, it sounds kind of weird, but I assure you it is delicious. I've eaten it a bunch of times. We've only made it once. That was a few months ago. It turned out amazing. So we're gonna peel this potato and we're gonna steam it until it's soft and make pretty much mashed potatoes out of it. Potatoes are done, they've been cooling outside. We're ready to get started on our bread. Super simple, we're gonna start off with about a quarter cup of warm water, and this is just regular commercial yeast. We're gonna do two and a half teaspoons. And you want this to kind of activate, so we're gonna let this sit in the warm water for about three or four minutes till we get a little bit of foam going. We're gonna be making more than just the potato bread tonight. We're also gonna be doing some baked beans, so while the potatoes are steaming, we're gonna get these beans in the oven. And these beans have been soaked in water overnight, so about 24 hours, and I also cooked them for about an hour. So they're tender, they're not quite done, but they're almost there. And these are yellow-eyed beans. Delicious bean, even just by themselves. Whole bunch of ingredients going in these. We don't have any bacon, so I'm gonna use some lard, but you wanna use molasses, and to make it even sweeter, we're gonna do some cowboy candy marinade. Oh, that's good. And this is a can of homemade barbecue sauce we're gonna be putting in there. And these are going to cook in the oven for a little while, probably about two hours on about 350 degrees. We finished it off with some spices and some seasoning, and we're going to do a little bit of mustard in there, and these are going in. Time to add our other ingredients. This is a, a super simple recipe. It's pretty much like a sweet dinner roll that you would use yeast with, except we're gonna add mashed potatoes. So to our yeast and water, we're gonna do one cup of room temperature milk. We're gonna do a teaspoon of salt, quarter cup of sugar. You can use butter, but we have coconut oil. So we're gonna do a quarter cup of coconut oil and two eggs. Let's mix this up and we're gonna add our mashed potatoes. The potato bread doesn't really call for a lot of potatoes. This one calls for four cups of flour with only a half a cup of mashed potatoes. We like to do a little more mashed potatoes. It gives it a little denser bread. So we're gonna do about a cup of mashed potatoes. And to mash our potatoes, we don't have a lot of kitchen gadgets, but one thing we do have is called a potato ricer. This makes like a really fine consistency out of mashed potatoes. It's also really good for making gnocchi. So we're gonna get a cup of this put through the ricer. That was a cup, but let's put a little bit more in there, get it extra potato-y, and we're gonna do four cups of white flour in this. So we're going for just a normal bread consistency, not too dry, not too sticky, we wanna be able to handle it. That's three cups of flour. Let's go on to our fourth one, add about half that and see where we're at. looking good. I'm going to knead it for maybe like three or four minutes. I don't usually knead it too much. And then we're going to put it back in that bowl. We're going to put it over by the wood stove where it's nice and warm. We're going to let it rise for about half an hour. Mmm, checking on the beans. Oh my gosh, those smell so good. They still got a little while to go. It's been about a half an hour. I think our bread has probably doubled in size. We're ready to make our potato bread. You can do this different ways. You can use a pan like this and you can make sandwich bread. You can use a Dutch oven. You could just make a nice beautiful loaf with this bread. And for what we're gonna have for dinner tonight, we're gonna make like dinner rolls. So we're gonna be using a uh, 12 inch 
cast iron skillet. To make our rolls, it helps to have a little bit of olive oil on your hands. It makes this dough easy to work with. And we're gonna shape our little rolls. Probably get like five or six out of this. Bread's going in, the baked beans, those are done. Those are gonna come out and the bread's gonna cook at 350 for about 25 to 30 minutes. Well, the beans are done and we're getting hungry. <laughs> I gotta try these, they've just turned like a dark caramelized color. It looks so good. Mm. Oh my gosh. Those are good. <laughs> Potato bread is done. And while this is cooling, we're gonna fry up some mousse chorizo sausage. Try some of that. It's so good. Ugh. How would you describe that bread, Ariel? Sweet, delicious, fluffiness. Fluffy, sweet, like you said, and just like a little dense from the potato. This is good. Mm. Potato bread, a mousse patty, a little summer squash relish, and some baked beans. And that is one heck of a dinner. We're getting started bright and early with our next potato inspired dish and we are going to be making latkes. And latkes are actually very straightforward to make. They are most similar to a potato fritter if you've ever tried those, just a few ingredients. They're a little more developed than your typical hash brown. And we are going to get started peeling these potatoes. I have four nice size golden potatoes or yellow varieties. And I think they're either German butterball or another russet type of potato. We're gonna get started on grating our potatoes and I'm gonna be transferring them to a bowl and soaking them in some cold water. I'm gonna let these sit for about 15 minutes to pull that starch out. ready to strain our potatoes so I'm just gonna grab little clumps and squish them just try to get all that moisture out and then I'm gonna transfer them to this bowl now normally I would discard this liquid but in this case we are actually going to be using the starch at the bottom for this recipe this is all the liquid we're gonna let this sit for a little bit to let that starch settle on the bottom Well, that's the starch on the bottom. So we are going to mix that back in to our dry strained potatoes. Oh my gosh, it's like concrete. <laughs> and we're gonna get three eggs and a little bit of salt added into here. Okay, well these are already looking incredible. They are super fluffy and just almost looks a little bit like cheese. And the wonderful thing about latkes is how crispy you get them. So that's what makes them a little bit different than hash browns is you fry them up in oil and you get them really, really crispy and golden. And that's why we use those specific potatoes. This is thoroughly mixed. So we are going to get our skillet going. frying these latkes up in lard, a nice layer of that. And they take a while to cook because we're looking to get them really golden. And I probably did these a little bit thicker than they should be. 
So they've been going for over five minutes and my guess is they're gonna take probably 15 minutes to get these all the way done like we want them. Our latkes are finally done and we are just extremely enthusiastic about getting to eat these. We're gonna let these cool a little bit and make a topping for them. You can top these with whatever you want, but we thought that this little mixture sounded good. And I've got some kefir, it's kefir cheese and yogurt mixed together. So it's really pretty thick, like sour cream. That's pretty traditional to top these with something like that. We're gonna add a little bit of dill and we're also going to be adding a little bit of our smoked hooligan that we jarred up. These look great with the smoke tool again. We are going to dig in. Of course, we're gonna do a baked potato. We're gonna do this a little different. We're cooking them in the wood stove and we're doing these ones fully loaded. And by fully loaded baked potato, I mean that we're gonna do a lot of toppings on these and one of them is gonna be loose chili. So we're gonna get that going first. We pretty much make chili different every single time we make it. A couple unique things we're gonna do in this recipe is we have a mushroom broth. We're gonna do white beans and instead of ground mousse, I had a mousse roast. So we're gonna do like thinly sliced mousse steak in there. We're also gonna be adding some red tomato salsa cowboy candy marinade, homemade ketchup, and tomato sauce. In goes the moose meat. We're gonna finish it off with onion, garlic. We're gonna do celery and carrot, and some herbs and spices, and this is going on the wood stove. Cooking baked potatoes in a wood stove is fun, easy, and it's awesome. They turn out great, but we're gonna put olive oil on these. We're gonna poke them with some holes with the fork, salt, and we're gonna wrap them in foil and they're gonna go in there on some hot coals. Probably gonna take about an hour to cook. And we're cooking russet style potatoes. We got a couple different varieties here, so these will be good. Okay, that's one ready. Got our coals pushed all the way to the back of the wood stove and then I'm gonna put these on the front. Pretty low maintenance for cooking. We'll just maybe turn them like every 15 minutes or so until they're nice and soft and done. Well, the chili's all done. Oh yeah, the potatoes are done. We're gonna let this cool a little bit. And we're gonna plate it up. Hey, that looks good. This is mine. I did the moose chili, did a bunch of pepperoncinis, some fermented cabbage, and this is aged 
cheddar on top. This looks good. I'm going to eat it. We're getting started on one of my favorite potato dishes today, and that is gnocchi. Gnocchi is Italian, I believe, and if you've never heard of it before, it is these delicious, fluffy little potato dough balls that you cook. We're gonna be using a favorite potato of mine, which is this purple potato, I believe it's Magic Molly. It's got this gorgeous color on the inside, and it's creamy and fluffy, perfect for this recipe. And we're gonna first start with getting these steamed. Our potatoes have cooked and they are cooled and ready to be run through our potato ricer. Actually, I think it's just called a ricer. And this is awesome for making gnocchi. It gets you that perfect consistency. So all you have to do is just take the potatoes with the skin on, probably just gonna fit one in there right now, and you push down and out comes the potato rice, the little threads. It's a gorgeous color too. Look at that color, that's beautiful. And that's what this ricer does is it makes it nice and fluffy. So we are ready to make our dough now. I'm just gonna put our potato, potato down on the table and I'm gonna crack two eggs right in the middle. Then we're gonna add some flour to this slowly but surely until I get to the exact consistency I want. And it's probably gonna be at least a cup to a cup and a half of flour. The best part about gnocchi is not only how simple it is to make, but also that usually when you make it, you get a lot of leftovers. So we're gonna have quite a bit of extra to freeze. These are ready to be cooked now. We're gonna boil them and we've got our water nice and hot. I'm just gonna drop in a handful because you don't want them to touch. Just kind of want them to be loosely circulating in there. And this takes about two minutes. Once they float, we know that they're done. Okay, these are done and it's time to make a little topping for them. We've got some shallots and a red onion and garlic sauteing and olive oil and my two favorite herbs rosemary and sage and i'm going to keep this really simple i'm just going to add a tiny bit of balsamic vinegar we're also going to be adding a little bit of this birch syrup that we made and it is so strong but i think it'd be really nice with this let's go ahead and add this gnocchi back in dig in and try these. I imagine they're very hot and they should be just like a pillow of potato dough. Right on. Those are delicious. Some of the best ones we've ever made actually. That coating on the outside is really plain, a lot plainer than I was expecting, but it's delicious. Wonderful. Yes. We're getting started on our fifth potato meal and tonight we're making pierogies. We have never made pierogies before and they are a Polish 
potato filled dumpling. They look delicious. We're pretty excited to eat this tonight. We're busting out the potato ricer again because we need mashed potatoes. I got a few different varieties here. We have a fingerling, which is Magic Myrna. We have a Fiesta and one called Rose Gold. So I'm gonna get these all ran through our little potato ricer and we're gonna start working on our filling. All these have been previously steamed. So they are cooked. And that's a nice yellow inside on that one. That one's beautiful. Looks like a sweet potato. The filling is basically just mashed potatoes, but you do add a few things to it. We're gonna do just a little salt and pepper in there. And you can do cheeses. You can do like sour cream or ricotta cheese, things like that, but we have kefir cheese. So we've got about a cup, a big cup of kefir cheese. And we're gonna mix this all in here. This is just about mixed and we're gonna add one more ingredient and that is a couple diced sweet onions. And I'm gonna chop these up pretty fine and I'm gonna cook them just a little bit before we add them to that. That's it, that is the pierogi filling. That was simple, mashed potatoes, we did cheese, salt and pepper, a little bit of onions, and Ariel is gonna come in here and she's gonna make our dough for us. Well, we made a lot of these, like 30 of them, and it's time to start filling them all up with the filling. The dough is really simple. It is just eggs, a little bit of water, salt, and flour. Yep. Do you need a little spoon? I need that little one right there. Perfect. Let's see if we can make this happen. You want to see about how much you can fit in there? Yeah, I think I can fit it pretty big. That Whatever looks... you did looks perfect. Get those edges a little better for me. Whoa, you can fit that much? Yeah, look, if you take it. And you're just going to stretch it? Stretch it at the middle first. Uh -huh. And then work your way down the sides. How did you do that? It smells so good with the onion in the filling. Yes, we were eating this filling. It's like just extremely good mashed potatoes. So the trick is to stretch the dough over the filling. And Eric's a lot better at it than I am. But I think, I think we've got the hang of it. We just have a lot more to do. We made 40 of them, so we're not gonna we're not gonna eat these all tonight. We're gonna cook some of them to to freeze. But to cook these, you pretty much just boil them, and then afterwards, we're actually gonna fry them up a little bit. And they don't take long to cook. Once they start floating, they're done. And we are keeping these traditional, so we're putting a little just lightly sauteed sauerkraut on top of these. A 
but that looks amazing. It smells so good. Ariel is going to come in here. We have never tried these and we're going to taste test them, see how they are. Okay, well, I'm very ready. We don't usually eat warm sauerkraut. I never had it warm. These look like a, they look exactly like a wonton. A wonton, yeah. I'm going to use my hands. I, they got that potato filling though. I already snuck a bite earlier and oh. this is, this is a, mm. I've had a little more time to figure out. They're good is all I could say. I'm not a big fan of really overly fried stuff, but yeah, these are good. Sauteed. Oh my gosh. Those are so good. Wow. They're not like, they don't taste like a wonton at all though. No. Nope. It is like a, like a burrito almost or like a chimney. I don't know. They really don't taste good. like anything I've ever tasted either. That's totally what I would say. That filling is like. Mm. So flavorful and fluffy, yeah. and the dough even is really mm -hmm. unique. And then with the sauerkraut on top, the onion in there. Oh my gosh, this is wonderful. Those are delicious. Pierogi, huh? I get the sense that we use butter, but we did not use any butter. You don't taste that like cheesy. It's a keeper cheese. Wow, those are delicious. Oh my gosh. Imagine the best mashed potatoes stuffed inside of a little dumpling. And yeah, fried. that was, that is good. And you, I feel like you could put anything inside that little meat, hot peppers, spicy, totally. different cheese. You could dip them, dip them in something. We thought it would be fun to say which meal was our favorite. Do you remember all of them? Yeah, I do. Um, I have two favorites. I love potato bread. So I love the potato bread from the first meal. And this would probably be my favorite as well because it's just so unique and different. I'd say this one or the gnocchi. That gnocchi was really good. That gnocchi was really they're, good. They're kind of similar, honestly. This and the gnocchi, yeah, they're boiled. But those are these are both just, they were all good. We had fun making these dishes. We do not make a lot of the same dishes in our house. We always like to try new things. And I yep. think this was really fun to branch out and try this stuff. Yeah, definitely. We love to get creative with our food. And we have so many potatoes. And they're just, we, we grew some really good varieties this year that just taste really good. And they cook up really good the different ways you cook them. The varieties we grew this year were from a local potato farmer. <laughs> farmer. And they, I have to say, they were the best potatoes I've ever had in my life yeah. of the ones we've ever grown. They were phenomenal. Huge difference. Yeah. Awesome flavor. Let us know if you guys have any other potato recipes that you like, that you love, that you just think are really cool and awesome. Definitely. We would love to hear your unique potato recipes. And we have plans to do a few more of these videos. Obviously not with potatoes, but we have plenty of other ingredients we need to eat up. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time. Right there, look at that. Look at that. To me, when I bite into it, it reminds me of cheese. Yeah. I think it's done. Hot potato! I'm not really that great at this. What a couch potato. You can call me potato, you can call me potato. Just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs>